So welcome everyone to this webinar here today on the subject of engaging in voluntary national reviews, sharing experiences. What we're hoping to do with this webinar is give you a little bit of the in, an insight into what it's like, all the benefits that come to libraries from getting involved in the sustainable development goals, but in particular in the voluntary national review process that was set up by the United Nations as part of its 2030 agenda in order to sure, ensure implementation. What's really interesting about this process is that according to the UN guidelines, it's really supposed to be a collaborative process, one that draws on the insights of all stakeholders, everyone involved in SDG implementation, both in order to understand better what's going on, the work that's being done, but also in order to define priorities. As a result, it's a great opportunity for libraries because we already know access to information is so clearly defined, is so clearly present in the SDGs and clearly libraries are the key organisations in making sure that this happens and that it's inclusive. So what we're going to look to do today is actually hear from some of the people who are involved. We had a great year in 2022 for library engagement in voluntary national reviews. A good share of these reports talked about libraries, about how we're contributing to education, to building community, to raising awareness of environmental issues, to strengthening democracy. In particular, we were lucky to be able to bring a range of some really great people, an all-star team, to New York, to the high-level political forum, where governments, ministers, presidents, ambassadors present these reviews of their, sustain of their implementation of the SDGs to their peers, receive questions and discuss about it, learn about how they can do more to implement the SDGs. So to show you who we've got with us today, we've got, as I said, a fantastic team. We have Ayanda Labele from the Botswana, in uh, Botswana International University of Science and Technology. We have Pramila Gamage from Verite Research in Sri Lanka. We have Mari Yakabzani, president of the La uh, Latvian Librarians Association, logically enough in Latvia. Alejandro Santa is joining us by video, and so we'll have some video contributions from him, but he's the coordinating director of the Library of Congress of Argentina. Adine Cole Phoenix joins us from the Planning Institute of Jamaica, logically enough in Jamaica. Julius Jefferson from the Library of Congress and a former president of the American Library Association. And another former president of the American Library Association, Lloyd Garcia Fibo. What we'll be doing, as I said, is organising this a little bit in a chat show format. It'll be a little bit less formal, we won't be doing presentations, but we'll be running through a series of questions, finding out about the experiences, the insights, the ideas of our participants, all with the idea of showing you that this is possible. This is something that you can get involved with and that you can really use, work with, not only to support the Sustainable Development Goals, which is clearly got a good thing in itself, but also to make sure that libraries are properly recognised and properly integrated into planning. So without further ado, I'm going to stop, stop by sharing and I'm going to go on to the first question on hitting on the list. And the first question is, what do the SDGs mean for libraries in your opinion? So I'd like to start here with Mara. Over to you, Mara. Oh, thank you. I'm uh, first uh, speaker in this question. Um, I see SDGs as a duty for all of us, a duty to inspire, engage, enable, and connect, as is, is this set in the IFLA strategy. Libraries, as the key players in the local communities, have a big potential not only to be active themselves, but also to motivate and educate local community. And I know that it already happens. The great work is done, but it is not enough. We must be more active and strategic as drivers in the achieving SDGs, so that our activities wouldn't be episodic and scattered, but planned, targeted, and cooperative. So that's my answer. Fantastic. Thank you, Mara. Sorry, I've just turned my video off. Thank you. Uh, let's hear, what about you, Ayanda? You're still muted there, Ayanda. There we go. Thank you, Stephen. As Mara says it, um, it's uh, working on SDGs is about collaboration. And libraries, uh, on, in their nature, they have a, a systematic way of uh, promoting inclusive access to information through that inherent, inherent, inherent systematic framework that connects um, 
the people, as the users of content of information, as the generators of information, and the technologies, uh, both the, the tools and the internet, availability of the internet. So for me, I look at it as uh, what it means to libraries. It's now a need to reposition, re-accentuate our role, and become more energized on what libraries can do. That's where I find it at the moment. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think, thank you also for underlining that point about doing things in, in a systematic, in a systemic way. I think that's a, it's definitely what the UN is trying to do with the SDGs in the first place. So recognizing that, reflecting that really matches up with that goal. What about you, Lloyda? Libraries are development accelerators and the SDGs are an opportunity for libraries to demonstrate that the services they provide are accelerating development in their communities, their cities, their countries, like a domino, wonderful domino effect. Uh, libraries can unlock opportunities for development that will otherwise would be missed thanks to the resources they offer, the space they provide and the expertise, resilience and resourcefulness of their awesome staff. So the libraries have a big role in the SDGs. Thank you, and I'm very, ha I'm very happy that you used the term development accelerators at the beginning as I will come on to this later, but they've already defined the theme for the next year's high level political forum. It's all about accelerators. So <laughs> it's good to touch on that one. Excellent. Um, can I now turn over to Julius? For you, what, what, what do well, the SDGs mean for libraries? Well, I think my colleagues have all have said pretty much uh, everything that I would want to say. Um, I can only highlight um, what Lloyd has just said, which is the biggest point for me. It's just an opportunity um, for uh, libraries, library workers to demonstrate their expertise and how we achieve the sustainable development goals. I think it's really important that we all understand um, the type of expertise libraries uh, provide through the library workers, through librarians and library workers on providing uh, access to information. Because I think that when we think about the sustainable development goals, we need uh, information. We need accurate authoritative information. And that's what we provide, access to accurate authoritative information. So again, uh, just a, another opportunity um, for libraries to uh, show their value um, within our communities. Thank you. And I think you, you raised quite an important question, which I think we always have to remind ourselves of with the SDGs, that none of what's in there is actually particularly new. It's the fact of bringing it together and attacking it in a more systematic way is one of the key things that the SDGs do. And underlining that these are things, of course, that libraries have always been doing. So it's great to have that opportunity to articulate it in that way. Um, can I now turn over to Pramila? What about, what about you? What do the SDGs mean for libraries from your point of view? Sorry, like to me, libraries are SDGs because as my, our past president, the donor uh, representing IFLA uh, voiced at the UN summit in 2015, there can be no transparency, accountability or participation without access to information and skill to use information. So this is the role played by us I think from the inception of libraries. But as I said, now we have to change our role and the way we, uh, way we provide access and way, the way we develop skills a little bit. Excellent. That, that, that's, that's a really powerful point, especially on the inclusivity side. I, I guess many in the audience will be aware that one of the themes of the SDGs, one of the underlying themes is that of leaving no one behind. And so having libraries again, where leaving no one behind is right at the heart of what we're doing through our universal mission. Again, it makes us so well placed to be actors, to be engaged in this. What I'm now going to do is turn over to Alejandro 
um, and we're going to hear a little bit from him from Argentina. And um, there will be subtitles. Los ODS para las bibliotecas básicamente son un faro donde poder mirar y pensar un futuro. Seguramente que no llegaremos al hambre cero en el 2030 o no arreglaremos todos los problemas de la sociedad, pero sí podemos mirarnos en un futuro que nos da ciertas certezas. Creo un lenguaje y una agenda compartida con toda la sociedad y además los ODS básicamente nos permiten tener indicadores para poder hacer una planificación clara y un, y un sistema de gestión de nuestras bibliotecas que nos permiten planificar el futuro y tener, y tener mayor certeza que haremos una excelente gestión para atender a nuestros ciudadanos. Thank you, Alejandro. And I, I think it's a point that I think a number of us have made. It's pretty crucial to know, I don't know the SDGs are a challenge. It's not just a case of, of saying that we are already doing, performing the SDGs. There's a really interesting opportunity in there to use them, to adapt our own way of thinking, to challenge ourselves, to use them to actually redefine how we contribute to society and articulate it in a different way. Oh, very good. We have Sidi has joined us. Sidi Moshuta Dingwa has joined us from Lesotho. I don't know, TD, are you able, we're on the first question, so what do the SDGs mean for libraries? Are you able to give your perspective? Are you able to unmute there? Okay, maybe not for the moment. We'll come back to you on the second question. I think that's probably easiest for now. So um, the second question, and this is sort of following on from the, the, the broad sense of what the SDGs mean for libraries, is to understand a little bit about what your engagement was around the SDGs before you were part of the IFLA delegation to the High Level Political Forum back in July of this year. And first of all, I actually want to turn to Adine, Paul Phoenix, who we didn't ask on the first question, so you get to ask the first on this one. So Adine, over to you. Thank you very much for that, Christian. So the the libraries in Jamaica, we have actually met with key stakeholders, such as heads of the library networks and made these individuals ambassadors of the SDGs and libraries. Some of these persons are the Director General of the Jamaica Public Library Service, the National Librarian and the Library Association President, just to name a few. Libraries in Jamaica also work closely with the SDG focal point, which is actually at the Planning Institute of Jamaica. And we would have had a workshop just to make sure that all the library, all the libraries, across whether it is public, private, school, academia, they were all on board. We offer online library research services through Ask the Library and Link from government websites. And we provide opportunities for training and capacity building, free access to ICT tools like internet, computer, and printers, provide a space for discussion and collaboration. These are just some of the things we did prior to going. Now, the engagement in the VNR. I had discussion with the Director General of the Planning Institute of Jamaica, Dr. Wayne Henry, and also Ambassador Brian Wallace, permanent representative of Jamaica to the United Nations. This was very interesting for me and I was really excited to share how libraries, how we would do it in terms of helping to remove the myth as it relates to misinformation and just ensuring that we are the vehicle that the country would use to help to achieve these goals. So from this discussion, I was able to confirm us partnering for a library forum across the Caribbean communities, looking at aligning the libraries to be the vehicle for the islands of the Caribbean to achieve the sustainable development goals. And this was one exciting discussion. And I attended at the VNR only two VNR sessions. And for both, I, I actually didn't speak at those but what I learned though, was just how much more as our colleagues have also shared, 
that we can be involved to ensure that everyone knows how much value we have or workers have and what we're able to contribute from the library community. That's my feedback on that question. Thank you very much. And I, I know I, I was lucky enough to be invited along to the session that you organized, I think back in November of last year. And it was, it was really inspiring to see the focal point, Latoya Clark, up there with the librarians and different types of libraries as well. It was really a, a team effort across the library sector in Jamaica to raise that awareness, to get senior buy-in, to build that awareness of the importance and the relevance of engaging around the SDGs. So thank you. Um, I'll now pass on to Mara. How were you involved with the SDGs before July this year? Latvian libraries are engaged in the achieving the SDGs quite hard. There are both separate activities from individual libraries and coordinated activities as well. In the end of the last year, a short summary about the contribution of Latvian libraries in the achieving the SDGs was prepared and made public. During, uh, during the AGLPF, I disseminated some printed copies of that, but it's, it, it is, it's available also in digital format for free to everyone, and I will put after a moment a link to that, so if you are interested in it, you can open it, download and read. Um, um, about the, uh, my engagement in um, uh, in the VNR, uh, in La Latvia there was um, my engagement in this VNR was a common work with my colleagues in National Library, uh, and we provided the cross-sectoral coordination center, an institution who was responsible about preparing this VNR with the information about libraries. And we gave also some best examples um, uh, from libraries and it was also included in the content of VNR. Uh, in general, I think that the Latvian libraries are reflected in this v uh, year's VNR quite enough because uh, it was the second VNR of Latvia and in first VNR, the Latvia, Latvian libraries was not mentioned at all. So that means that if you have an interest to show your impact and you have right contacts and you are active yourself, you can, um, co uh, can start cooperate and uh, start uh, to talk with the right people and uh, to uh, get involved in this VNR process and uh, to put content of libraries and library examples in the VNR as well. So I wish you good luck, be active, may make right contacts and you will get in VNR also. <laughs> That's fantastic. And, and I think, you know, really, I think Lat Latvia is a standout example this year. There are whole pages dedicated to Latvia, and which is, is fantastic. And I think it's an interesting point as we've done some of the analysis. And it does seem that in sort of second and third VNRs, countries are better at talking about libraries. I think as they get more sophisticated, the more they think about it, the more they realise that libraries are essential for delivering on the SDGs. So great. And there's the link up in the chat. Um, I'm now going to turn to Ayanda. For you, how were you involved with the SDGs in advance of the High Level Political Forum? Oh, thank you very much, Stephen. I, in my case, I think it was uh, similar to what Mara had said for the first reporting. Um, we were engaged, but we did it, we, we, we didn't have a, as a systematic arrangement as we would have loved to have. And now with uh, the experience we have had, I want to believe it would be better. Better from the perspective of libraries, we now know what to look out for. We have been doing it, but we were not pronouncing what we were doing in uh, exactly alignment with the SDGs. And then for those who were coordinating the, v, the, 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 the reporting system, they were not as engaging us. And now that we have been able to forge a working group with them, and we have been able to identify and appreciate the limitations that each one had, I want to believe in the uh, going forward, we will be better prepared and now knowing what exactly would be looking out for in libraries? Because yes, work has been done, but it is the reporting of that work that wasn't systematic. I, I think you make thank a really, you. thank you. I was going to say, I think you make a really good point there that 
actually a lot of the time you're already doing 90% of the work. It's just that little bit on top to actually demonstrate it, because a lot of what we do around the SDGs it is standard advocacy. It's showing the value, showing the importance of that libraries. And so it's almost more making use of that work, getting more value out of this work we're already doing, which I think is always an important point. I think we're conscious that, that people only have so much time for advocacy. So excellent. Thank you. Um, now I think I will go to Lloyda. How have you been involved in the SDGs? I know you, this is the, this is a long term commitment for you. So. <laughs> Yes, indeed, and this is an excellent question. I've been involved since the very beginning when uh, we presented, I presented the first uh, event that IFLA had, or libraries had at the UN in 2014, January 2014, so it's been a while. Um, and that resulted, uh, all that work uh, back then resulted in, um, in from the uh, specifically access to information on target 16.10. So it's been very important. Um, but I want to highlight that a level of, of now locally um, in the U.S. with ALA, uh, we had the um, American Library Association's United Nations 2030 um, Sustainable Development Goals Task Force, and uh, which I chaired. And this is a, a great team with Julius as a, as a president at the time that appointed uh, that task force. And so we developed a multi-year strategic plan for the association to help libraries to engage with the SDGs. And then we created free downloadable charts for libraries to demonstrate how their services are accelerating development in their communities. And we have charts for academic, public, and school libraries free available on the website that I can put uh, the link on the chat in a minute. We created uh, downloadable bookmarks as well for uh, those that are carrying out uh, book clubs about the SDGs are very popular for teen, adolescents, all ages. And we also developed webinars about the SDGs and the work of libraries that included UN officers and also library associations from different parts of the world. All that work is freely available on the website and the recordings are available. So we've been at BC creating awareness and helping libraries to understand how to engage with the SDGs. And as we know, we're already doing that, but we need to kind of connect the dots and then get more uh, into the know to then realize that we are definitely impacting uh, development in our communities. Thank you very much. I think, again, it's a fantastic example. I know you've done some I know, amazing work on behalf of IFLA, but also in the US, and just, again, it's raising awareness of showing why this is something that matters. So if I, now I'm going to turn to, T, to TD. Um, TD, I'm sorry we didn't get to you on the first question, but. I wanted to ask, I don't know, what did, how, what, did, how did you engage around the SDGs? Can you hear me? Yes, you're very clear now. Okay, thank you very much. I may just summarize from my understanding on SDGs, what they mean to the libraries, I'll be brief, that this is one of the rare moments by which libraries can see that they have a role to play in development. It is a very broad subject, which involves very many sectors of, of yes, development, and which need information. I, I, I know to some it might appear as if I'm downplaying our, our downplaying our profession when I say the word, the title, the term information tends to be more meaningful nowadays than libraries. And when we say we are providing information to all the broad spectrum of development agencies, organizations, I think we become more meaningful than when we say we are providing library services to them. Yes, we can use them both these terms, but I've since realized that when we say we provide information to them, it makes more sense, practical and more meaningful. So for the first time, I can see that we are being brought to the mainstay development arena because 
we are a cross-cutting interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary field. And they all need their types of information. And that's where we are. We are not charging commercial fees for that, unlike many service providers. So on the other hand, I see reciprocity. We do for development agencies like they do for us. They promote us, we promote them. Now we can see that kind of stimulation whereby we are not left behind indeed, as the adage says. So getting to the second one, what have I been doing? I've been not doing much, but ever since the preparation for the trip to New York, that's when libraries started playing a role, like being invited to meetings that have been uh, organized by the central planning office. And I am not myself representing my work. I seem to be representing their profession. Where I work as a teacher, library association, which looks up to those who have been, those who have been connected to the central the government planning office and where we are connected to the civil society that also plays a part and we are part of it. There is what we call the Lesotho Council of Non-Governmental Organizations. There are libraries that belong to government. There are libraries that are academic. We have types of libraries that are public, but they now fall under one umbrella because theirs is to give a service to all. And I think that is where we see our connectedness to sustainability of SDGs that are broad based. I can see the future of libraries and information services being enhanced through SDGs. I can see eight government agencies, non-government agencies as well, playing a part to help each other to achieve their different goals. I hope that can can be brief for now because I, I can in late. No, that, that was great. I was really glad that you covered both of those sort of key points in there. I think underlining that cr really crucial one about it's a comprehensive agenda, but library comprehensive institutions. We're active across so many different spaces. And so I don't know we almost need a broad agenda like the SDGs in order to show the value, the relevance of what we're doing. And I think also those points about partnerships is really helpful. And I think in particular that experience of getting involved in the national SDG coordination, building up links and you know, getting other people to see how valuable other organizations to see how valuable libraries are. And I might now turn to Pramila for your views on, on what engagement you had around the SDGs before New York this before July of this year. Before New York, uh, what we realized was libraries are contributing a lot, uh, which is directly uh, linked to SDGs, but the librarians themselves are not aware that they are contributing to SDGs. And some of the librarians, especially in rural areas, some small public libraries, they have not even heard, not only SDGs, uh, even the MDGs. So <clears throat> realizing this, we initially conducted few uh, online because that was the time uh, pandemic on we couldn't meet people. So we con conducted online seminars for various groups. And at the same time, I was selected, uh, nominated to the uh, Sri Lanka Library Association. And I had the actual, uh, because of this 
ideas i was nominated to the council and uh, they <coughs> really accepted the idea and they also put that in their agenda action plan and we approached the uh, national authority that is the national uh, the sustainable development council of sri lanka so we met them we had got an appointment we met them and we realized within first half hour no clue about the library associations or the libraries but it was at the end very fruitful meeting uh, by that time they were they uh, preparing the vnr and they have uh, called uh, it, institutions to submit data for the vnr interestingly uh, they have not con uh, contacted the national library which is come under uh, comes under the uh, ministry of education and at that meeting as a partner director general of national library was also there with us so in the end uh, <clears throat> they realized our contribution and the sdc has their agenda and they wanted us to contribute towards whether we could contribute towards that line and it, so it became a win-win project uh, that is how uh, the situation before so after when we were preparing we immediately prepared an action plan along with their objectives and what they would like to have from us and submitted it and uh, even though it's just two lines uh, we were lucky uh, they uh, stated that in their uh, our partnership was mentioned in the uh, vnr uh, sri lanka country report for the first time this is the second report we submitted to un and this is the first time uh, we were uh, the libraries and the library associations role was mentioned uh, so right now we are very closely working with them and yesterday we had the national uh, library associations national seminar and uh, director general of the sdc and also one of their council members uh, we invited as a keynote speaker and that discussion was also very fruitful and hopefully we will be able to be more uh, collaborate with them to get into uh, the vnr in detail that's fantastic that's I, at I, the I, moment i i i i love i love the sort of freshness of that story but i think it's it's something we come across a lot of the time policy makers in different areas simply don't think libraries they're always somewhere else or something else but as soon as you actually expose them to what libraries are doing they suddenly realize and i love the fact that you invited the chair of the council to the conference because i know we know that whenever we bring other outsiders along to library conferences they always come away really excited by all the possibility and all the things that they can do so. actually we missed one opportunity because we i wanted uh, president elect ifla vicky mcdonald to address first and show the library contribution worldwide and what ifla does and then go on to this uh, guest of honor and the keynote speech unfortunately we missed that but it was a very fruitful uh, discussion and we can work together the, actually uh, we have changed uh, their impression about sri lankan libraries and librarians <laughs> And Which we are signing the official MOU with them, with the uh, Nash, uh, Sustainable Development Council on next coming Monday at 1 p.m. in Sri Lankan time. Oh, fantastic. Lots of photos then, promote. But that's fantastic. That's a really good example of just a, a milestone, proof of a relationship being built. So that's excellent. Okay, I'm now going to turn to Julius. Over to you. Okay, so um, you heard uh, my colleague, uh, ALA past president, Lorde Garcia Fabo, talk about what she did. So my job was fairly easy, and I'll just take you back to 2019 when I was ALA president-elect, and Lorde and I had the opportunity to uh, work with some of our colleagues from Russia. 
uh, as we gave presentations about what our respective countries were doing. Um, and uh, we heard from my colleagues in Russia that they really made SDGs a priority. And at that time, ALA had not made SDGs a priority. And so it was pretty easy for me to, to say, um, to have the authority to say, uh, uh, we need a working group and then put Lorde in charge uh, who had the background and then bring in people like uh, past IFLA president, Donna Sheeter and, and put her on the committee. Um, so we were able to accomplish all that because we did have folks, as you mentioned earlier, Stephen, who were engaged in, in the U.S., who were engaged in SDGs like Lord and like Donna, um, and others who were engaged in, in international relations and, and particularly SDGs. And I think what was, and you heard Lord mention this, our goal broadly was awareness and really bring libraries in. Um, we wanted to make sure that, and we're not done with this work, as a matter of fact, and we can talk about that later. Um, we wanted to make sure um, that uh, libraries, librarians, library workers, truly understood their role in these sustainable development goals. And I think we, um, we were successful in that. You heard, uh, and Lorda, I think she posted in the chat, uh, some of the outcomes of, of with that. Um, but we were, we were very pleased uh, with making this a, a priority during my uh, ALA presidential year 2020, 2020, 2021. And we continue to do this work. So um, thank you, Lorda. And thank you, uh, folks uh, who served in that working group. Absolutely. It's great. I, I, I really also like the idea of I don't know what you did internally, just in terms of creating that structure, just to marshal, marshal thoughts, marshal ideas, marshal energy, in order to actually focus on this. So I don't know it's a very good use of your privileges as president there, and obviously a good choice of chair, <laughs> as I think so. Time has time has proven. <clears throat> Excellent. So what I'm now going to do is turn back to Alejandro. So I'm going to reshare my screen um, and obviously make sure I do it in a way where you actually get the sound as well. So let's hear from Argentina. Can you see? Apologies. I'm just giving me a second. I'm just going to make sure I share the right screen there. La, ¿cómo, ¿Cómo llegamos a, a, a este evento de, del Foro Político de Alto Nivel de Nueva York? En nuestro país, eh, nuestra Biblioteca del Congreso de la Nación Argentina tiene un fuerte lazo con la autoridad de aplicación de los ODS en nuestro país. El Consejo de Políticas Sociales no solamente trabaja en conjunto con la biblioteca, sino también nos capacita a nuestros funcionarios y a nuestros compañeros de trabajo, sino también a toda la comunidad bibliotecaria desde hace ya varios años. Esto nos permitió explicar de primera mano la importancia de las bibliotecas en la aplicación de los ODS en nuestro país y en toda la región. Es así como durante dos años consecutivos nuestra Biblioteca del Congreso de la Nación logró ser parte del de, eh, informe voluntario de la República Argentina eh, en, en cada vez en mayor grado y en mayor responsabilidad. There we go, that's back to me again. Um, I also, I, know, I, I like that, I know that again, Alejandro Argentina is a fantastic example. They were also stood out massively this year. Um, there was again to three pages of the Argentine Review. And I think that topic which has come up a few times in the answers we've had of finding the people who are in charge, finding the people who are coordinating, make sure they understand what libraries are about, make them your friends get them along to your conferences. It, it's great, I don't know, it, it's a really good example of how to build relationships, show what's going on, make things happen. So um, <clears throat> I think we've got through everyone on that question. We're about halfway through, and um, obviously I think everyone will keep on giving short answers so we keep things dynamic. What I should say is that there obviously is a and a function. So if you do have any sort of big pressing questions, we'll try and end a little bit early so that there's time for those as well. So don't hesitate to use the question and answer function. So now we're going to move on to our third question, 
about what were your expectations ahead of the high level political forum in July of last year? So I'm going to go first to Adeem again. Adeem. Thank you. So my expectations were, I was really looking forward to networking with the librarians across the world. And it was just an awesome experience to meet all of you and the interactions and the discussion that was just through the roof. Another was having the opportunity to sit at the decision-making table with leaders from across the world and to participate in giving quick, having the quick notes done. That was my first experience sitting with the delegation from Jamaica and the hard work, the late nights, you know, getting everything together. Another was just participating through discussions about how libraries can really be the vehicle. So preparing that presentation I did for the library, that library session was really one of the expectations I had. I really wanted to, to see how that would have been received. Was it anything like how I imagined it? Nah, it was way more than that. Just to arrive and see the rooms, the different heads of countries and to hear the discussions and everything, I realized that mm, I'm at the right place with the right people to help to make the right decisions and also to be a part of the team that will be the mover and shakers to help to make the changes. So that, that was it as it relates to the, my expectations and was it anything that I imagined? Thank you. I, I'm obviously glad it was an extremely positive experience. I think you're right. It's difficult to imagine these things. And it's true. There's always a little bit of a sort of wow factor when you get in. But that's good. That drives adrenaline. That's always a positive thing. Excellent. So now I will turn to Mara. What were your expectations? Sorry, I'm turning on. <laughs> Um, my expectation, of course, was to meet people from all over the world which are interested in the same issue to, to achieve SDGs. I, I think you also. And of course, my aim was to represent IFLA, my association, my country, and to speak about the role of libraries. Uh, it was my first um, forum, and I think I've done my mission very well. Uh, I would like to say thank you to Ifla and personally to Stephen <laughs> um, for, for uh, your care. And also I would like to thank also thank you to Oli Henman, a global coordinator from the Action for Sustainable Development, also for great organiza organizational support and personal approach. It was very, very helpful, uh, especially for uh, those who was it was first time there. Um, and I think that the situation turned out perfectly as a cooperation with uh, the right people at the right moment is very, uh, um, very necessary and the personal contacts are always very important also in the field of the achievement SDGs and the personal contacts is the, the best win-win for, for me from this forum. Thank you. No, I, I, I should have sort of underlined this after a Dean's speech, but you know, meeting people around the world is also a great way of building up, I guess, your just the energy of recharging the batteries to find people who think the same things, who care about the same things. And Exactly. Thank you. Um, I'm now going to turn to, I'm going to mix things up a little bit. I'm going to give Julius the chance to go first from the US this time. <laughs> Julius? Yes, okay. Um, let me just say, uh, as Mara just said, so we definitely want to, I'm sure we all agree that we thank you, Stephen, for just shepherding us along, because um, for me, um, I had no idea what to expect. Um, I certainly have lived in New York City and been around the UN, but I never had the opportunity to actually visit the UN, especially in this capacity. Um, I'll tell you, um, I uh, had expected uh, the idea that I would uh, have global awareness, awareness about SDGs and hear from folks from around the world. Uh, that was an expectation. Um, I absolutely expected uh, to build relationships and meet new people and, and, and have conversations. Uh, uh, listening to stories that people told, I had an expectation that I would, I would do all of that. 
Um, but I think one of the things that I, I, I walked away from um, was just this, this inspiration um, and this, this uh, idea that, that SDGs are really important and they affect people's lives. And I think um, I had no idea I was going to hear uh, all of the various stories from folks from around the world about SDGs and how they affect their communities. And so it was something that I think really uh, motivated me uh, and gave me a greater awareness uh, and, and certainly um, a, a fire to really want to be uh, involved. Um, but uh, aside from all of that, um, we had a great team. And I want everyone listening to know that everyone you see here in this webinar, um, we were all together, Alejandro included. He's not with us here, but uh, uh, via, um, via some shots, some, some recordings. But we were all together. And we were all able to connect with each other. And uh, I think that that was um, very inspirational as well. Um, everyone here is, was very passionate about SDGs in their communities and shared. I learned so much about everyone's community um, that uh, it was something that uh, I am very fortunate to, to be a part of. So um, I hope that answers the question. That, that's just some thoughts that I had. That's, that's, that, that's, that's fantastic. I think I. <laughs> I know, obviously, we absolutely do not need any more sort of praise for me on this call at all. That's, <laughs> um, but I think the thing I, I really like the point you made about learning, that actually these are, I know, a lot of the time, I know, we've got our day jobs, we need to produce, produce, produce all the time, but actually being able to there, be there, learn at the, the macro level about some of the key themes, but also just those stories can be really, really powerful. So thank you. I'm now going to turn to Ayanda, over to you. What were your expectations? I thank you, Stephen. I'm not too sure what really I expected because I was a little um, lost in, in finding what really to look out for. But what came out then made me realize what I needed. Um, I needed to meet a team of uh, experts, of librarians, and get to know how they were reaching out to their coordinating teams. Um, and, and that I realized, I, I, I really successfully uh, used their tips to, to get to network with my national coordinating team. So that I would put a big tick, I achieved it. And also I, one of the things that I realized I wasn't doing sufficiently was letting uh, policymakers or leadership in the country get to understand and appreciate really who we are and how we can contribute to the SDGs. I nailed that one because I was even able to tell His Excellency the President and I'm building on the networks that he said, don't, get, don't lose that woman. We really need to bring her along. So for me, that was another trick that I didn't know I, 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 I was going to be able to do it. And then another thing also that was a wow moment for me was being hosted in the UN library. When I saw that in the program that would be in the UN library and I will be presenting there and talking about what librarians in my country are doing. I was so excited and I even brought a diamond back home because um, we I learned that all that was hosted by a Mutwana librarian who works at the UN. I didn't know that. So you see, it broadened our network. We even brought her along. Just last week, she was doing a presentation to the team of librarians in the country. So it broadened our networks. And um, yeah, I think there's a lot that I didn't know to expect. But when I got it, I realized that it wasn't about expectations. It was what I needed. And most importantly, I, I was able to be part of the national voluntary uh, reporting uh, team. And I'm still in their network. When they have meetings, I'm definitely sure that I'll be part of them. I have had meetings with other stakeholders they have had. I have, like I say, His Excellency said, don't lose track of what libraries are doing. So I've been invited to come and explain what I was doing in the New York. So I was there at the office and trying to, and explained it well. And so I'm expecting there are going to be very beautiful projects that are going to 
follow up there. For example, we want to work on developing institutional repositories. Uh, and now in, in, in contact with the key people in, in national library, the key people at policy level. So I'm good, I'm good. I didn't expect much, but I got quite a lot. That's Thank great. You. Thank you. You're also touching on the next question there, but I, I think that's all. It's true. That's also a useful thing that going along to these events. It's also about just seizing an opportunity. And I admit, I don't know, you hanging out with the president of Botswana was that. that that's definitely a high point. I mean, we've got a, a librarian making best friends and getting the WhatsApp number of the president. That's that. That's a win, to be honest. So we'll definitely take that. Um, I would now like to turn to Pramila. Yes, uh, I was also expected to see and learn uh, and hear what other countries are doing, how they face the challenges. Is it the same like Sri Lanka or is it very different from other countries? So that was achieved, uh, especially during Vietnam's presentations. Uh, I learned a lot. Uh, it, it was very interesting to hear discussions, how the uh, representatives from the same country uh, are challenging, contributing to the uh, reports presented. That was amazing. And we can, especially from uh, Sri Lankan uh, presentation during that. So we, I was able to see different perspectives uh, of the uh, VNR, the data, it is not just libraries, there are other civil society organizations as well in the like libraries on the same track. So we, I have already contacted one organization uh, working in Sri Lanka, working with women, and they want us to be part with them. So learn from that. Uh, and also the other uh, expectation was to engage with Sri Lankan team. Unfortunately, because of the current uh, exchange and economic situation, just one person participated in the forum. That's the DG. Uh, normally, you know, in my country, 10, 15 people from the ministry <laughs> attend it. Uh, but I was able to contact, uh, have discussions and have good relationship with the ambassador of Sri Lanka, the permanent representative to UN uh, of Sri Lanka. Uh, it was really a good uh, discussion. Uh, and he even asked not only the SDGs and the libraries, how the library science education in Sri Lanka is it same as the past. I was a bit surprised to get that uh, question from him. And we discussed uh, many uh, ways how we could contribute to them uh, and how they could uh, educate and enhance us on what they want to achieve. So that was good. And also I attended the Indian session, Indian model of S uh, SDG session. It's really, really Indian, but uh, I could take one or two points, how they gather data and how they audit the uh, their contributions. So that is very useful. Uh, in a different way, we can apply that to a CLLS action plan of SDGs. So that is another one I learned. Uh, mm -hmm. And also, uh, I really like the side event uh, that organized at the UN library uh, that I actually, I didn't initially expect something like that, but I really like that and learned a lot, learned a lot, especially uh, the uh, speech given by the UN representative uh, of the library, how they, uh, how they manage the misinformation, disinformation during the COVID. That was real. It is not just for librarians or libraries. It's very useful. Uh, there are a lot of practical takeaways from that speech. So I really like that. And also from my team, how they uh, engage with libraries and the uh, issues and challenges that they face. So uh, I 
thank you right. for organizing that side event for us uh, and also all the other uh, you know uh, organizations done by ifla for us thank you thank you thank you I, I really like the idea that you should almost go along with the expectation of coming away with a big to-do list i think that's, that's a useful one but i think also a useful point from that is that a meeting like this does offer a really great opportunity to actually spend time with people that you really don't get back at home because everyone's busy and doing other things. Okay, so um, I'd now like to turn to TD. TD, are you able to amuse and share your ideas of what your expectations were before the before the forum? Just ask you to unmute and see if that works. Oh. Hello. Hi, yeah, we can hear you. Go for it. Yes, that workshop actually conditioned us. It prepared us that we should know that such big fora are likely to live inexperienced, maybe some of us, likely to get lost. If you are not prepared, you don't know where to go. You, you, you may lose time wondering, is, is it this forum? Is it this conference? Was it there? But since we were prepared, we were made to get ourselves organized to be on time. I, I find myself not getting lost that easily. I think that was helpful that you want us. We were prepared. Another thing that I remember Stephen said to us or to me was that start interacting with your, your, your team from home, the officials, government dignitaries. It, it, it's always very difficult. But once I entered the two last fora, I mean to say conferences, then I was absorbed and I got to know so I was part of them even when we got, we got to New York. Something that I also expected, I thought would happen, was that we as IFLA team would be seated specially somewhere and influencing them to know us there, particularly them asking us questions or relating to us. That was not necessarily uh, the arrangement, but like Ayanda said, it was a very good surprise that we found ourselves presenting in the Hamashold library. And to my surprise, the team of those dignitaries that I thought were looking down upon librarians were there to support us. And supporting us was a commitment to them that they would continue to know about us. And it is happening, we are in one group now when we pass messages about the next events, I am there and I'm expected to influence. I am expected, like I expected them there to remain in their cocoon like they do here at home, but they are no longer like that. So I think that's a, a very good expectation that I had because now it's a good surprise that we are together. And I must emphasize that for the benefit of the Lesotho Library Association, which is the one which has a link with SDGs because it's broad, it's recognized in the umbrella body of civil societies. I was surprised, I wasn't expecting politicians, well, it was a political forum after all, to be praising their governments and their achievements so generously. And they were scanty and not say much about their negative or, or the, where they, I'm sure they were failing. So I think that we must take note of. We shouldn't be like them, even though we are now interacting with them. They, 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 they were really praising themselves, their governments, their approaches. And we learned quite a lot from the 17 SDGs. I wasn't expecting to be so informed, as informed society was the theme. So in brief, I think that was all. Thank you very much, Steve. We have done it well. Thanks. Thank you, Noah. I think 
it, it, it's an interesting point as certainly IFLA engages at the um, at the high level political form as a civil society organization so from the floor but because a lot of the time we are connected to government in some way and also libraries are seen as probably easier partners to work with there are some fantastic opportunities to actually go and make friends actually go and insert ourselves into those delegations to be part of the delegations and spend time with people and I should say as well you know, it was a great success that you had so many people from Lesotho coming along to the event of the Dag Hammarskjöld Library that was a really good exact result so now I'm going to turn to Lloyda what about your expectations well, I am going to be brief because I will have more to say in the next question. I, I switched them around. Uh, but um, my expectations, well, you know, I've been working and advocating for um, in behalf of IFLA at the UN for a long time. And um, I wanted to see my old friends from uh, representatives from other um, uh, non-governmental organizations and civil society groups that we have linked over the years and uh, collaborated to, for instance, bring to fruition this access to information on target 16.10 because that wasn't done by only by us, you know, it was a collaboration, big coalition. So I really wanted to, to connect with them and see what they're doing and how we can um, um, uh, put together efforts in the future. So that was very important. Relationships are very important to keep them uh, strong and they're all over the world. So that's very important for us. Uh, the next thing, and almost at the same time, I wanted to meet this new team. They were coming from different countries, different regions of the world, uh, new people at the UN. We, we need really this energy. Um, audience just uh, uh, exemplifies the, the enthusiasm that we all had. Um, and so I wanted to meet the team and I was so glad to see um, from my end of things that everyone was already active in their countries in one way or another. And then they brought that, uh, those efforts to, so to speak, to fruition, right? At the high level political forum where they met with presidents and all that. Um, and then um, I, I also, uh, my expectations were uh, in the, you know, I have worked with different IFLA staff at different stages at the UN. So I also want to uh, commend Stephen for uh, kind of like, you know, <laughs> arranging everything, getting us together and his team back home. Um, I thought it was wonderful the way they summarized uh, the work at the UN and put it out for the IFLA members to read because uh, this is a lot of work, a lot of energy. People have come from distant places and it's all on behalf of libraries. And it's good that members are aware of what is happening and it's good stuff. Uh, they can build on that and their own countries and capitals as well. So um, yes, it was anything as, like uh, how I imagine it, yes, and even more. So I'm very glad to uh, stay engaged and involved. And I will uh, say more about my experience in the next question, I think. Excellent, thank you. And I think also clearly that the point of this webinar as well is a chance to, to learn from each other and to actually keep up that information and demonstrate those possibilities that the SDGs offer. So now I'm going to turn to Alejandro and go on to our video with him. Las expectativas que, que tuve antes del viaje a, al Foro Político de Alto Nivel de Nueva York son muchas porque conozco la importancia del debate presencial con el otro, del intercambio de experiencias de otras realidades. Eh, el grupo que la isla eligió para que estemos este, presentes en la ONU fue un grupo representativo de las realidades de las regiones donde la isla tiene su representación. Y en esto, eh, quiero, quiero ser muy claro, fue muy enriquecedor, porque eh, me permitió, en gran medida, contar nuestra realidad, explicar las riquezas y las pobrezas de la región de América Latina y del Caribe, pero también poder, poder explicar que las bibliotecas no solo somos dadores de servicios, sino que tenemos la la obligación y el compromiso de brindar a nuestros ciudadanos el acceso libre, democrático y gratuito a la información, al conocimiento y al esparcimiento. Esto fue uno de los temas fundamentales que pude llevar adelante en este importante encuentro.
Thank you very much, Alejandro, for your perspectives there. I know that Alejandro is another old hand in this slightly and had attended once before, but it's always really valuable. I know it's certainly valuable to get that insight. So we've not got so long left. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to encourage fuller answers on the next question, but I want everyone to be ready on your final question to just give one sentence. So just to say you are pre-warned about this now. So um, the next question that I have on the list is what difference has engaging in the SDGs and the high level political forum make? And I know that some of you have already touched on this in your presentation so far in the in what you've been saying so far. So you don't need to repeat what you've said already, but I don't know, a couple of years of new things, things you haven't talked about so far, where that engagement with the SDGs has really made a difference. So I'm going to start again with Adine. Over to you, Adine. Okay, thank you again. So this uh, engagement gave me the opportunity to have more communication with the different labs in Jamaica. And in addition, I am now aligning the strategic plan to also include SDG goals set for libraries. What will I be doing differently? Have more targeted goals, strategies, and tactics shared with the different libraries and have monitoring and evaluation in order to report on our progress. I will also schedule meetings with specific ministries, departments, and agencies to confirm how we may align. And of course, I know there's a need for more advocacy work in collaboration with the Library Association of Jamaica. Thank you. That was brief. <laughs> Excellent. Very, very efficient. But I think you know, it sounds like you've really got a roadmap. I think you've come out of this with a clear set of ideas and things to do, which in the end is, is, is fantastic. And you know, use those opportunities. Otherwise, people will move on. They'll forget. So that's fantastic. Um, now over to you, Mara. Of course, I have some lessons learned, as you all. Uh, the main problem for me was a lack of time, uh, as my work in the association is voluntary, and I do not, uh, in addition, um, it, it, I have to do it in addition to my um, duties <laughs> in, in the day. So I had total lack of uh, time to do everything perfectly. So, but uh, um, I'm saying that the, uh, there would be given more time for another uh, time, but it's very important to make close uh, contacts, not only with IFLA team, uh, which is going to uh, New York, but also with team of your country, not only state officials, but also uh, NGO representatives. Uh, of course, the state officials are not always very open to cooperation and communication, uh, but you have to try to reach them and uh, maybe you can use uh, in this um, um, target um, NGO uh, representatives uh, as I uh, have done. Um, uh, and I uh, tried to contact as well um, uh, officials and also NGO representatives. And uh, yeah, that's my lesson. So, mm -hmm. and, 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 and what, what, what do you think, what are you able to do differently now? Just getting back to that fourth question again, as those are some really good lessons about you know, what we can learn, how we can you know, do better, do even more in future. What will you do differently following your engagement in New York? Are there, are there, are there new connections that you've made? There are new sort of opportunities now to, to go out and talk about library? Uh, it's a question was to me? Yes, yes. Yes, uh, maybe my mistake was to work alone. Uh, I, I, I recommend to make some team also for you. Maybe you are going alone to New York, but you have to make your team here uh, to make contacts because my mistake was that I made all contacts alone, but you have to make your team to make more contacts. As more you are in your team, as more contacts you get. So maybe that's a, a, a advice. I think that, that, that that's a useful one. I guess it's what we were hearing already from, from Julius and, and Lloyd earlier about creating that committee, creating that group mm -hmm. of people. So in fact, let, let, let's let's go on to Julius now in terms of what, what difference engaging with the SDGs has made to your work. Yeah, so I'll be brief here. So um, I think uh, as we talked before about creating a working group, 
Um, what what uh, what we want to do now, after engaging in the high level political forum, is that we want to create a opportunity. As and I'm, I happen to serve as chair of the International Relations Committee of the American Library Association, an opportunity to have a a subgroup of our, our IRC committee that will focus on the sustainable development goal. So it's it's about focus. And so when we think about what we're going to do differently, we're going to have dedicated individuals that will be taking a look at uh, the goals uh, uh, at least twice a year, giving us a report of what we could be doing and sort of extending that work that we did with the, with the working group on a, on a permanent basis. I think that, that's helpful. And I guess as well, I think there's actually some, some of the work that Mara was talking about that she'd been doing in, in Latvia previously, that that work over time, you build up such a great bank of contacts and examples and connections, and that really starts to pay off. And you see it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and, and the, the preparation work is, is really worth it. Um, let's go to Ayanda. What are you going to do differently, having participated in New York? Thank you, Stephen. Uh, for me, uh, what I have picked and would guide me to it differently, it's, uh, I've, I've, it has helped me see the gaps in the reporting system, the national reporting system. So now I have been able to pick uh, the conversation starters because I now know what leadership wants. So that has been a very good starting point for me. And also, I think I picked a need to restructure my alliance with the development, uh, the other stakeholders within the development agenda and position, particularly also, not just at national level, I think at regional level, I serve as the vice chair of the, 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 the Sub-Saharan Africa Regional uh, Committee. I have now seen what we can do as a region. And I think I am now in a better position to lead my colleagues in the team. For example, how we are going to do uh, the next voluntary national reporting and how we are going to guide the next country that is up for reporting. And how we are even going to participate in other development agendas like the Africa Sustainable uh, Youth, the, the, the Youth Summit, uh, the Internet Governance Forums. It has broadened now my, should I say my leadership on in the region, how I am going to be leading not just the country, but also the region. So it, 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 it worked well for me. That, that, that's fantastic. And I really like this commitment to uh, sharing these lessons and making sure that others benefit but I think you're also completely right that the things that we learn from this sort of participation are applicable elsewhere and that we can get involved in other agendas which in turn may bring better recognition and greater support for libraries so that's fantastic particularly Thanks. Steve if I may say particularly if we get the experiences of Jamaica and Argentina those would be very good for us in the region to, to pick experiences from. Thanks. That's, this feels like extra homework for everyone on this webinar that we need to have another check-in in three months or so to see where we've got to. We'll see, I'm trying to see if people are smiling at that or looking unhappy, but anyway, um, thank, you, thank you. Let's go on to Pramila. What, what, what will you do differently having participated? <coughs> We identified that uh, the although the libraries are contributing and there are very good projects, there's a lack of proper marketing and promotion among the respective communities as well as stakeholders. So we thought uh, the through the Library Association Working Committee, we will properly audit the project benefits and uh, advocate and establish new partnerships with other relevant stakeholders. So already we have done that to some extent. Now, uh, tomorrow we I am presenting at uh, one of the leading library schools, universities in Sri Lanka uh, about IFLA as a whole, and then the SDGs and what we have done and how they could contribute towards the SDGs. And already I have spoken to the head of the department about 
the possibility of having at least one module or one assignment on sustainable libraries and SDGs. So they said that is something they need and they could work on. So this might take long, but at least uh, we can start to move. Uh, and also uh, that's the main name, we will strengthen our partnership with the national authority and try to uh, be getting in, involved, more involved in the review process. Because as I mentioned at the beginning of this webinar, we were left out. Uh, so the next we wanted to be there uh, and work with them and get into the VNR process. That's fantastic. So we are working towards that. I think that's good. It's, it's a good goal, but I think, uh, as we've said, I think you've already, there's some good progress there. I do like the idea of thinking about what we can do to ensure that this engagement is sustainable, both by training LIS students, making sure that they see sustainability as something that's a, a matter for them, a question for them, but also building up that relationship, having that permanent place. So I'm going to go now to TD. TD, are you able to unmute? Yes, of course. Participating in that uh, UN forum has made a difference. And it's like beginning a journey because it has deepened my understanding of SDGs. I, I, I knew the term and I, it was like it was for others to be engaged in that field, not as librarians. So combining SDGs with libraries or information has also widened my scope of work. I've got to interact with the Ministry of Planning at the government level. I've got to pass on to colleagues who may still have fears or complexes about what SDGs are about. And I remember even when I left New York, I communicated with my colleague there from Jamaica say, would you like to be a visiting lecturer in my department and come and talk about the role of SDGs in librarianship? I still post that invitation to all of you because I can see you are becoming experts in this. As well, I have seen the relationship of the topic that we dealt in with at the Hammarskjöld Library, uh, integrity. I'm saying now I can revise my coursework, my course outline on information ethics, which I'm teaching. It, it, it is, it's so deep and so broad and high. No, I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's about it. It's, thank you, Steve. Thank you so much. And I, again, I, I like that, yes, it's broadening that scope. I do like the idea of the Dean Cole Phoenix World Tour. We'll have to sort of think about that as, as a, just a standalone initiative on its own. Excellent. Lloyda, over to you. Yes. Okay. So how it has made a difference in the work and what I will do. Well, um, the participation in the um, HL Yes, I have Labour Political Forum um, was tremendously significant uh, to connect in person with UN decision makers to continue work I've done since 2014 and bring now um, them aware of the work that ALA has done because we want to have a stronger connection with our local uh, authorities. So uh, the strengthening of the relationship with libraries that was very important. Um, we were able to connect with a, a, a representative from the UN, um, uh, from the US at the UN, and we are hoping to um, be able to follow up. As you know, there are other priorities like worldwide crisis and all that, but we are hoping to uh, uh, follow up uh, with them to uh, strengthen that connection. Before uh, this kind of like cycle, when we were working towards the uh, actual SDGs, 
um, I was able to connect with the uh, US representative for the um, SDGs. But then, as you know, um, and this is very important, I think, to share because other countries have gone through different uh, situations. As you know, we had another administration and that administration wasn't very uh, into being part of the UN. But now we want to go back. So you see, there are things that happen and we can all learn and strengthen our work in this area. So we are already in that uh, connection with a person at the UN representative and we hope to stay uh, connected and also for um, to share with the other delegates. The other part is that um, the participation in the two programs that IFLA had was very important. We had, um, I just want to refresh everybody's memories, a program on July 7, uh, that with different partners. And there we share case studies of libraries, of cultural institu institutions, and how they integrate to local development plans. And then the other program was on July 11, where we spoke about trends and how libraries are helping to build back to get uh, better through the SDGs and partnering with libraries. And so what we did is that those were very highly opportunities for libraries and we wanted to raise awareness within uh, locally in the US. And so we connected with ALA and ALA tweeted the various participations. We also shared some photos with them and uh, ALA has 232,000 um, um, uh, people following in Twitter. So that was a really big scope and that uh, we were able to reach out people. And they also included it in other communication channels. So it's, you know, also about the big picture, right? What we want and, and what we need and how to maximize the efforts from the library associations, the, those uh, capabilities, the resources they have, and I think by doing that and then sharing it, like we are sharing it today, we are also, I hope, uh, helping and, and motivating, right? Uh, other countries that it is possible. But like Mara said, I want to stress that out. We need a team. So it's a team that might include your library association uh, staff, if you have it, or the volunteers that are in, in some official capacity and also librarians at large that are across the country because we need to um, impact and reach decision makers. So I will leave it there and we can continue at another, in the other question. Thank you. I, I think it is a key one also in any cases because librarians across the country are already doing this. They're the ones who can actually bring that legitimacy in of showing that we're delivering the SDGs systematically to use a word we used at the beginning on the ground. Okay, I'm going to go to Alejandro, and I'm just going to go down and get to the right screen so that we can hear him. So now over to Alejandro. La diferencia que, que pude tener eh, después de este, de este encuentro fue que... Eh, I'm not hearing Alejandro, I'm just going to reshare that screen. repetían en el resto de las regiones, en el resto de muy cercano eh, de La diferencia que, que pude tener eh, después de este, de este encuentro fue que eh, me sentí muy cercano a mis compañeros de, de delegación, donde las realidades que nos sucedían en nuestra región de América Latina y el Caribe se repetían en el resto de las regiones. Eran exactamente las mismas, pero con diferentes actores. Y también sirvió de mucho para afianzar. Que es quien lleva adelante el, la, todo lo que se refiere a los ODS de la República Argentina. También afianzamos lazos con nuestra representación política en, en, en Naciones Unidas para poder intercambiar diferentes experiencias y poder trasladarle la, la realidad de la Argentina y de la región latinoamericana. Una experiencia en particular que, me, que pude traer en el encuentro fue mi participación en el foro político de este foro político alto nivel. Se me dio el espacio para poder hablarle a los parlamentarios que estaban presentes en, en esa importante reunión donde se discutían diferentes temas y pude poner en valor y explicar brevemente la importancia que tienen 
en particular las bibliotecas parlamentarias en las diferentes regiones del mundo y en todos los países. Bibliotecas que a mi modo de ver y a mi modo de entender son fundamentales para la construcción democrática de las sociedades modernas. So, thank you there to Alejandro. And, oh, I apologize, I think my video is going to be back in a second. I'm not going to stop for that. So, I think also there's, there's a useful reminder there, just again, about the number of different communities that are there. There are special meetings for local governments, for parliamentarians, for higher education. So, again, there's the value of that to build up those relationships and keep on following. Now, we're running ever so slightly over. So I'm really going to ask each of our participants to give your answer to the last question. Just a few words, one sentence. I know this requires quite a lot of discipline. I apologize for this, but we've had so much really good content. Um, I will note already that I will probably edit out the mistakes I've made um, and then put the video up online so I don't look too incompetent. Um, but anyway, I'm now going to hand over and the final question is the one thing that you think that libraries need in order to be able to engage effectively with the SDGs and in particular on the VNRs. So I'm going to start with Adeen, just a couple of words. Okay, here we go. Computers, fundings from the government for the government consortium, for a government consortium subscription, internet, tablets, smartphones for librarians to offer online services such as Ask the Librarian, training opportunities for librarians and information professionals to build capacity so that we can give more as we align to achieve sustainable development goals. Excellent. That was a very concise list, but yeah, I think it, it, it's true. It's one of the arguments about this is that libraries need investment to be able to deliver. I think we're an investment, not a cost, but we need that investment to be able to do things that actually have full impact. Excellent. Um, Mara, over to you. Uh, in my opinion, we need uh, our own desire and interest. Uh, everything starts from ourselves. If we will sit and wait, nothing will happen. When we will stand up and take action, everything will happen. And it doesn't matter that nothing happens at first time. Get up and try again. And don't believe anyone who says you will have no success. Build a team, look for a cooperation partners, make networking with others who are interested in the same issue. Networking and experience exchange is very important, as well as coordination in regional and national level. Fantastic. I like that. Again, it's building on those teams of coordination, building that team. Ayanda. Over and above what they have just said, I think we need to be re-energized, to re-energize ourselves. Uh, we need to really uh, re-energize ourselves, re-strategize, um, pronounce what librarianship is all about and what we can offer. Because I think the greatest gap is uh, people not knowing or the globe not knowing what we can do. And that's because we are sitting. So we need to re-energize, reposition ourselves, re-strategize, reconnect, and, and, and I am re-energized, so I think that's all that we need. Thank you. And I think you're doing a good job of energizing everyone else here. <laughs> <laughs> Pramila, over to you. Yes, uh, I think uh, we need to work with our communities, uh, establish relationship with uh, all the stakeholders, all the relevant authorities, uh, and also we need to formulate plans to integrate SDGs into all library programs and projects. Library associations also should uh, uh, formulate plans. There are uh, specific professional groups and committees uh, should have their own plans and integrated to SDGs. And then uh, the we have to monitor, evaluate, and audit benefits to make our case to national SDG authorities and get into VNR process. Fantastic. It's a really good, really good combination of things. Yes, working on ourselves, but working on those relationships. Fantastic. Lloyda, your couple of words. Yes, uh, well, libraries are essential for social cohesion. 
and we ought to go to work together in concerted action. So that's concerted action together uh, nationally and also globally. And I want to add that it is key also for library associations to harness participation of libraries in these different efforts, then uh, to be able to help the members on how to speak to library, uh, to elected officials, share the value of our proposals, and also uh, continue to be library accelerators, uh, development accelerators. That's fantastic. I, I love that it's a concerted effort because each part of the system, the library field can play that role. That's a really good point. Julius, over to you. I'll be brief. Libraries uh, need leadership. Libraries need uh, leaders, uh, whether it's in, in libraries or as Lloyd just mentioned, in association, um, as my colleague said, to acknowledge, focus, put energy in the awareness uh, of SDGs and how they affect our communities. So without, without leaders, and, and everyone here is a leader and we're doing this work, but we need more leaders to be able to, uh, as Lloyd said, accelerate the idea that this is very important. This affects all of our lives. It affects all of our communities. And so this is the role. So leadership and awareness. I think that's a really key point on the leadership side to show that this is something that's important to coordinate, to help people see how they make the most of it. Thank you. TD, over to you. Oh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yep. Can you hear me? Yes, it will just be like repeating. I've had colleagues have talked about financial assistance, but even technical. On our own, we should commit ourselves, give ourselves time to learn more. This means li library and information sector is dynamic. It will continue to change. We are seeing this through SDGs. Our, uh, our field is not as narrow as the title or the term indicates. So even on our own, let's not just wait for Stephen to call us. Let's see ourselves interacting more. Thanks for Ayanda for calling me for something to keep me on my toes. Let's commit ourselves, time and everything. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And, and uh, at the end, I'll share a slide with some sort of ideas of materials so you don't have to wait for us to call. You can actually just take things immediately. I will now uh, play Alejandro's final answer. And then I promise my wrapping up will be very short. ¿Qué necesitamos las bibliotecas? en orden a poder comprometernos con, efectivamente con los objetivos de desarrollo sostenible, particularmente, como dije al principio, tener claro que los ODS nos permiten tener indicadores. Esos indicadores nos van a permitir entender si el camino que hemos emprendido es el correcto o es incorrecto. Pero también nos da una posibilidad y una y una este, oportunidad muy importante porque los ODS igualan un lenguaje entre lo público y lo privado en todos los países desarrollados las empresas tienen muy muy en cuenta el cumplimiento de estos objetivos en nuestros países donde las necesidades son muchas y donde los recursos son pocos los objetivos de desarrollo sostenible nos permiten explicar brevemente en qué estado están nuestras instituciones y cuál es el futuro que queremos para las bibliotecas en nuestra región. That was yeah, excellent. That was a, a lovely sort of summary of that and I don't know, that possibility, but I suppose in, in particular just seizing that possibility and that I think and that's something that's really come out across this that we have an opportunity we're already doing so much of this work maybe we need a little bit more help you know, and a little bit more of a push to make things happen but there's so much we can get done so what I'm just going to end off with actually is just firstly obviously a massive thank you to everyone who's been involved so to all of our speakers here today to Mara to Adine to Ayanda to Pramila 
to Lloyda, to Julius, to Alejandro, to TD. Thank you so much. I think you're the ones who did the work. You're the ones who made those connections there in New York. You're the ones who are taking those forwards and providing such great examples that the rest of the field can follow. And so really, thank you so much for that. It was a pleasure working with you. It's a pleasure to continue to work with you. In terms of what others who are involved in this might be interested in doing, I said we will put the video, the recording of this session up online. So look out for that one. It'll be on our, our, our news page. You will also may be interested in joining our SDGs mailing list. So if you go to the full list of IFLA mailing lists, you can find it there. It's an open list. You can sign up very easily. Look at our take action page around the SDGs. We've, got, we've updated some of our materials about explaining the SDGs, some of the tools for getting involved, for finding out how you can be involved. And then of course, just keep watching the space because there are more sustainable development, there are more voluntary national views next year. As mentioned earlier on, there's a big focus on accelerators and we would argue that libraries are the development accelerators par excellence, by definition, we unlock progress, we make progress happen. So we're already running over. So I thank everyone who's stuck with us, who's been able to stay with us. As I said, we will share the video shortly. But other than that, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your attention. Thank you to our great participants for your insights and keep following the space. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Stephen. Bye. Um, Stephen, bye, bye. bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. bye everybody. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Yes.